tree. The distinction of past and future. Now it's obvious to everybody that the phenomena of the world are evidently irreversible. By that I mean things happen that don't happen the other way. You drop a cup and it breaks, and you can sit there a long time waiting for the pieces to come together, <laughs> to come back into your hand. If you watch the waves breaking at the sea, you stand there and wait for the great moment when the foam collects together, rises up out of the sea, and falls back further out from the shore. Would be very pretty. <laughs> as a matter of fact, the demonstration of this in such lectures is usually made by having a section of moving picture in which you take a number of phenomena and running the thing backwards and then see all the laughter. The laughter just means this ain't going to happen in the real world. But actually, that's a kind of a weak way to put something which is so obvious and deep as the difference between the past and the future. Because even without, our, without an experiment, our very experiences inside are completely different for past and future. We remember the past, we don't remember the future. We have, no, we only have, a, we have a different kind of awareness about what might happen than we have of what most likely has happened. And the past and future look completely different psychologically and so forth. And uh, the questions of memory, of apparent freedom of will, in the sense that we feel that we can do something to affect the future, but none of us, or very few of us, believe that there's anything you can do to affect the past. And remorse and regret and hope and so forth are all words which distinguish perfectly obviously the past and the future. Now, if the world of nature is made of atoms, and we too are made of atoms and obey physical laws, this obvious distinction between what happened in the past and the future, and this obvious irreversibility of all phenomena, you would think would most likely have obviously its interpretation in that some laws, some of the motion laws of the atoms are going one way, that the atom laws are not such that they can go either way that there's somewhere in the works some kind of a principle that wuxels only make wuxels and never vice versa, and so the world is turning from wuxley character to wuxley character all the time. And that this one-way business of the interactions of things is the thing that makes the whole phenomena of the world seem to go one way. And yet we haven't found it yet. That is, in all the laws of physics that we've found so far, there doesn't seem to be any distinction of the past and the future. That the moving picture should work the same way going both ways, and the physicist who looks at it should not laugh. Details now to be explained. Let us take the law of gravitation as our standard example. If I have a sun and a planet that I started off in some direction going around to here, and then take a moving picture of this, say it gets to here, now take a moving picture of this backwards. Take a moving picture of it, excuse me, and run the movie backwards and look at it. What happened? Planet goes around the sun in an ellipse. The speed of this way, of course. Starts here, goes to here, keeps on going around. Goes in an ellipse. The speed of the planet is such that the area swept out by the radius is always the same in equal time. Just does exactly the way it ought to do perfectly satisfactory. It cannot be distinguished from the one going the other way. So the law of gravitation is of such a kind 
that it doesn't make any difference. If you show the phenomenon running, any phenomenon involving just gravitation running backwards on a film, it'll look perfectly satisfactory. Put it precisely more this way. If at a given instant the particle moving this way, if all the particles in a more complicated situation would have every one of their speeds reversed suddenly, then the thing will just unwind through all the things that it wound up into. That is, if you have a lot of particles doing this, then you suddenly reverse the speeds, they will completely undo what they did before. <laughs> now this uh, is in the laws of gravitation, which say that the velocity changes as a result of the forces and so on. In, if I reverse the time, the forces are not changed, and so the changes in velocity are not altered at corresponding distances. And so each velocity then has its succession of alterations made in exactly the reverse way that they were made when it went out before. And it's easy to prove that the law of gravitation is time reversible. And the law of electricity and magnetism, time reversible. The laws of nuclear interaction, time reversible as far as we can tell. The laws of beta decay that we talked about at a previous time, also time reversible. The difficulty of the experiments of a few months ago, which indicate that there's something the matter with the, some unknown about the law, suggests the possibility that in fact it may not be also time reversible, but we shall see. But at least the following is true. This beta decay that we're talking about, which may not be time reversible, but I don't know, is a very important phenomenon for most ordinary circumstances. The possibility of my talking to you does not depend on that happening. It does depend on chemical interactions. It depends on electrical forces. It doesn't actually depend much on nuclear forces at the moment, but it depends also on gravitation. But I am one-sided. I speak and the voice goes out into the air and doesn't come sucking back into my mouth when I open it. And this irreversibility cannot be hung on the, the phenomenon of beta decay. In other words, we believe that there are, in the world, most of the ordinary phenomena which are produced by atomic motions which are according to laws which can be completely reversed. So we have to look some more to find the explanation. If we look at this more carefully, and our planets moving around the sun more carefully, you soon find that it isn't quite right. For example, the Earth's rotation on its axis is slightly slowing down. It's due to tidal friction. And you see that friction is something which is obviously irreversible. If I took a, a heavy weight on the floor here and pushed it, it would slide and stop. If I stand and wait for it, it doesn't suddenly start up and speed up and come into my hand. So a frictional effect seems to be irreversible. But a frictional effect, as we discussed at another time, is the result of the enormous complexity of the interactions of the block with the wood, the, the jiggling of the atoms inside, that the organized motion of the wood of the block is changed into disorganized, irregular wheel waggles of the atoms in the wood. So that therefore we should look at it, the thing more closely. As a matter of fact, we have here the clue to the apparent irreversibility. I take a simple example of, uh, for example, if we have blue water, say ink, and white water, that's water without ink, <laughs> in a tank with a little separation and pull out the separation very delicately, then it starts separate blue on one side, white on the other side. Wait a while. Gradually the blue mixes up with the white. And after a while, the water is loop blue. I mean, <laughs> it's sort of 50-50, a color uniformly distributed throughout. Now if we wait long for a long time and watch this for a long time, it does not by itself separate. Oh, you can do something. You can get the blue separated again. You can evaporate the water and condense it somewhere else and collect the blue dye and dissolve it in half the water and put back this thing and so on. While you're doing all that, however, you yourself are causing irreversible phenomena somewhere else. So by itself, it doesn't go the other way. And that gives us some clue. Let's look at the mo molecule. Suppose that we took a moving picture of the water of the blue and the white water mixing. It would look funny if we ran it backwards, because we'd start with uniform water and gradually the thing would separate and it would be obviously naughty. Now we magnify the picture so that every physicist can watch atom by atom to find out what happened irreversibly. Where the laws of balance of forward and backward broke down. 
And so you start and you look at the picture and you have blue atoms. That's ridiculous, but we'll call it that. We have atoms of one kind and atoms of another kind jiggling all the time in thermal motion, wiggling, bouncing. And if we were to start at the beginning, we would have mostly atoms of one kind on one side and atoms on the other kind on the other side. Now these atoms are jiggling around. It's too small a box. You need more to get this effect. <laughs> billions and billions of these atoms. Now these atoms are jiggling around. <laughs> I just put one more, but I'm getting tired of making the approval. Now these atoms are jiggling around, and if we start all on one side and all on the other, we see, of course, that in their perpetual irregular motions, they'll get mixed up. And that's why it gets to be more or less uniformly blue. But let's watch any one collision. Here's a particular collision selected from that picture. Here's the, this molecule moving this way and this one moving this way. And they come together, say, in the moving picture, and they bounce off this way. Now you run that section of the film backwards, and you find a pair of molecules moving this way, bouncing off that way. And the physicist looks with his keen eye and measures everything and says, that's all right, that's according to the laws of physics. If two molecules came this way, they would bounce that way. And if they came that way, they would bounce this way. It's reversible according... The laws of molecular collision are reversible. So if you watch too carefully, you can't understand it at all. <laughs> because every one of the collisions is absolutely reversible. And yet, the whole moving picture shows something absurd, which is that the molecules start in the, in the reverse picture. The molecules start in this condition, blue, white, blue, white, and blue, white, and so on, all mixed up. And, yet, and as time goes on, through all the collisions, the blues separate from the whites. And they can't do that. But that's not natural, that the accidents of life will be such that the blues will separate themselves from the whites. Yet, if you watch it, movie, this reverse movie very carefully, every collision is okay. Well, you see that all there is to it, that the irreversibility is caused by the general accidents of life. That if you start with a thing that's, comp that's separated like this and just make irregular changes, it gets more uniform. But if you start with something that's uniform and make irregular changes, it doesn't get separated. It could get separated. It's not against the laws of physics that these things bounce around so that they separate. It's just unlikely. It just it never happened in a million years. And that's the answer. <laughs> the things are, are irreversible only in the sense that going one way is likely to go, but going the other way, although is possible and is according to the laws of physics, wouldn't happen in a million years. It just, it's just ridiculous to expect that if you sit there long enough, the jiggling of the atoms will separate a mixture, a uniform mixture of ink and water into ink on one side and water on the other. Now, if I had put a box around here so that this was all the molecules that there were, as time went on, they would get mixed up. But if you're patient, I think you could believe that in the perpetual irregular collisions of these molecules, after some time, not necessarily a million years, maybe only a year, when you keep watching, accidentally they get back more or less like this. In the sense, at least, they get back far enough to say that if I drew a line through all the whites on one side and all the blues on the other, it's not impossible. However, the actual objects with which we work have not only four or five blues and whites, but they have four or five million, 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 million atoms. And it's just not likely that four or five million, 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 million are all going to get separated like this. And so the apparent irreversibility of nature does not come from the irreversibility of the fundamental physical laws. It comes from the characteristic that if we start with an ordered system and have the irregularities of, na of nature bouncing, then the thing goes one way. Therefore, the next question is, how did it get ordered in the first place? <laughs> that is to say, why is it possible to start with the ordered? You see, the difficulty is that we start with an ordered thing, we don't end with an ordered thing. One of the rules of the world is that the conditions at the beginning, I mean that the, the thing goes from an ordered condition to a disorder. Incidentally, this word order and disorder is another one of those terms of physics which aren't exactly the same as it is in ordinary life. The order need not be interesting to you, human beings. It's just a question that there's a definite situation. They're all on one side and all on the other, or they're mixed up. And that's the order to disorder. Maybe you like it better mixed up, but that's not more ordered anyhow. Now, 